Hi, I'm Julie Feifan Balzer, and I'm super excited today to show you how to make this great little mixed media art shadow box. It's perfect for hanging on the wall or giving as a gift or whatever else you can imagine. We're going to be using a brother scanning cut and some easy supplies that I'm sure you just have lying around. So this is the design that I'm using and it's something that I drew on the computer and anywhere that's black is going to be cut away and anywhere that's white is going to stay. Now it's really important that the white areas do touch the edge. You can see how pieces of the hair touch. This is so the box stays together. But you could use anything. You could draw a word. You could do whatever you'd like. And I'm going to go ahead and load this into the scanning mat. I just pull up the plastic and slip it in. And then I'm going to place it into the machine and I do like to put some pressure up front just to make sure that it's loading correctly. And and I simply press the load button and you'll see that the machine pulls it right in. So then I can choose to scan and it'll give me some options. I want to scan to cut data which means I want to save it basically into the computer's memory and I'm going to press the start button and then right away the machine is going to suck that in and it's going to go ahead and scan it. Now it can take a little while for it to scan and to process but you know take a glass of water, take a walk around, stretch your back, whatever it is and you'll see that the screen will tell you after it starts scanning that it's recognizing and that just means that it's processing. And once it does, you'll see your design pop up. We're going to choose the second scanning option, in which case the machine is going to create cut lines on each side of the design. I'm going to drag in the sides just so that it's nice and close to my design. And then to increase the scan's accuracy, I'm going to press that little slider bar, choose delete size, and I'm going to reduce the little margins around there. And if I zoom in, you'll see it's just a nice clean scan that gets really close to the design. So I hit OK and OK again, and then I'm going to save it into the computer's memory. So I'm going to save it to the machine. The other symbol is to save it to a USB. I like to save it into the machine. I just find it easier. And it'll tell me the name of the file. I'll say OK. I'll hit the home button. And I'm saying going to say it's OK to delete the patterns because I know I already saved it. And now I'm ready to choose a pattern that I want to work with. Um, but first I need to unload that scanning mat and I need to load in a mat a cutting mat where you can see that I have put a piece of smooth white cardstock down. So once that's in the machine then I'm ready to choose from my saved data and again from the machine as opposed to a USB and I know that it's the last thing I scanned in there it is but I need to scan in the paper so that I get perfect placement so I'm going to choose the scanning button and once again I'm going to press start and the machine is going to pull in that paper it's going to scan it and show me exactly where it is so now I want to select all because I want to move that design exactly into the center and so I'm going to just drag it right there so that it's generally centered on my piece of paper hit OK OK again, OK one more time, and then I'm going to cut it. Now before I cut though, I want to make that my make sure that my blade is set correctly. Now for me, this is a 5. It may be different for you depending on the paper you're using, how old your blade is, all that kind of stuff. So be sure to do a test cut to make sure that it's accurate. But once you're set and you're ready, then you can go ahead and you can press the start button and the machine will just begin to cut. And it's pretty quick and easy, though uh, I will say that maybe watching it on video is not that exciting. So I think we'll go right into fast forward so you don't have to sit through the whole thing. And once it has cut, I'm going to release that mat and then I'm simply going to carefully peel up my design. Now I do want to be a little bit careful. It's got lots of little tiny pieces and I want to be sure that I don't rip any of those delicate things. So I'm going to go ahead and just sort of work it around, work it around and soon enough you'll see that beautiful face start to emerge. And easy as pie, I have something really cool. Now before I go over to the desk with it, I just want to say when it says finish cutting, you just hit OK. You say it's OK to delete all the patterns when you press the home button and you'll be right back at the beginning. This is a piece of foam, very well used foam that I'm using as a cushion because we're going to score this. And I'm simply going to place this underneath my piece so that I can score. And scoring is just so that we can eat more easily fold this. And I have a grid ruler here, which is great because I don't actually have to measure. And about a quarter inch away from the bottom cut here, I'm simply going to score. I'm using a bone folder. You could use all sorts of different tools. You just need something pokey. You could even use a pen, a, you know, a ballpoint pen that doesn't have any ink in it. I'm just basically creating an easy fold line a quarter inch away. And I'm just going to let those lines cross each other. And you'll notice I score back and forth several times just, just because I want to get a really nice, neat fold. 
So, you know, you just want to push hard enough that you're making a dent, but not so hard that you actually pierce the paper. And um, you could also use, they have professional things like a score it and a score pal and stuff like that. Very fancy that you can use. Okay, so now I've scored a quarter inch away all around, and now I'm going to get my paper trimmer. And with my paper trimmer, what I'm going to do is I want to cut at the one inch line and I want to be an inch away from the score mark so that I have an inch. So from the score mark to the cut is an inch. So I line up right here my score mark with the one inch and then I go ahead and I cut, okay? And I line my score mark up with the one inch and I go ahead and I cut. And again, I'm gonna line the score mark up with the one inch. I'm gonna go ahead and cut. And for the last time, line the score mark up with the one inch and go ahead and cut. So now I have this piece, which is scored all around. And I'm gonna take some scissors and right along these two score lines and these two score lines, I'm going to snip. Okay, but just till where the points meet. This is so that everything can fold up. So there, that's one, that's two. Do the same thing on the opposite, right along that score line, right along that score line, just where the two bits of scoring meet, okay? And now everything is gonna get folded along that score line. And again, the reason that you score paper is to make the folding easier. It's to make sure that your paper doesn't crack. If you wanna crease with your bone folder, you absolutely can, whatever you wanna do. But you wanna make a nice, neat, clean, nice, neat, clean box. That's what we're going for. Something very pretty and slick. Um, you can also do this, by the way, I've done a face here, you can do it with words, you can do all sorts of fun stuff, it's just whatever you can imagine. Why not make a little shadow art box for your wall? It's a great way to display something. And I think it would be really fun actually for like a birthday party or something, to have like little happy birthday boxes everywhere. Okay, so now that this is all folded up and ready, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to place adhesive on these little tabs. So you can use whatever your favorite adhesive is. I happen to like this big old huge ATG, but you know, you could use a glue stick. Um, I tend not to use wet adhesive like Elmer's or something, you know, school glue with um, whenever I'm doing paper just because it tends to warp it and I don't like the drying time. But you can see how easily that just folds up. Boom, boom, boom. And now we have a little box. Isn't that cool? But we need the bottom of the box. And, you know, I'm a mixed media artist, so I like to do something painty. So I'm going to grab a piece of painty paper, and we're going to make the bottom part of the box basically the same way we did this one, except that it won't have a cutout. So let me grab that and do that. So here's my painty paper, and I've cut it to just a skosh over five and a quarter. Um, if I measure this, I would say it's like five and three eighths approximately, and then five and three eighths. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the same scoring process. Now the box is gonna fold up this way, so I wanna score with the painted side up because right, my face is gonna go right on top there. Doesn't that look pretty already? I'm excited. Okay, so I know that my sides are about an inch, so I'm gonna go ahead and measure up there. Now, how did I come to the five and a quarter or five and three eighths measurement? Well, that is very easy. What I did is I simply measured this box, right? And you can see that this is three and a half, and then you know that each of the sides are an inch because that's what we did, right? We cut an inch away from the score line, so that's three and a half plus four and a half plus five and a half. So I know that if the top of this is five and a half, that I want the bottom have to be slightly smaller so it fits inside. And that may be, this bottom may be a little bit small for it, but I'd rather have it be a little too small than a little too big. So that's just for you to know. And I'm going ahead and I'm scoring. I know it's a little bit hard to see, but I also wanted to point out that I, this is very heavy watercolor paper that I painted and stenciled on. And I have no problem with this foam and the bone folder and the ruler just scoring it and it's gonna fold up beautifully. So 
so don't worry about using paper that's too heavy. So here, uh, you can see the score marks a little bit better on the back, and so why don't I cut it on the back so that you can see it more easily. And I'm doing the same cuts that I did before, right there, right there, to where they meet, right there, right there, to where it meets. And then we're gonna do the same process of folding, and you can score a little extra, well not score, but just, you know, crease it a little bit. I want to fold everything so it's nice and tight. That just really goes together quick and easy. And you know, one of the things that's so cool about these little boxes is that they're light enough that to hang them on my walls, I just put a piece of masking tape, just a loop of masking tape behind it, and it sticks, no problem, right on the wall. So you don't even need to think about how to hang it. Or can you imagine having a dinner party where you did the names of each of the guests and then put these little boxes at their tables, you know, at their seats? I think they would love it. So here you go, folding it up. And again, tabs go in. And again, the tabs go in. And I have a bottom of a box, at the top of a box, and I'm guessing when I put them together, yep, they're gonna make a box. And here you go, you have your little bit of shadow box art. I think it's absolutely lovely. It has a mixed media flair because it's got that gorgeous paint behind it. And you can make them any color, any style that you want. If you liked what you saw, I hope that you will visit my blog at balzerdesigns.typepad.com and you can find out more about the Scan and Cut at scanandcut.com.